in? Right there, right in there. Oh, okay. And that and was it, a bunker, like a well. I mean, they, you know, the city was there, and they had they uh, had uh, kind of uh, dug out, or and then they had a bunker there, and we went top. You dump the garbage, and they had the truck back in there. Huh. And you know they, and after when the truck got filled up, he took it out to Galita to the hog farm. And it was so, a transfer station. It huh? was. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. This is the I, every time ago, I still can. Re now they've sloped it off. It's all city parking. It's a city property. I'll drive by there and, and show you. Yeah, you know. I'd like to know where it is. The actual yeah. address. So uh, yeah. that's. We would do that until. I was telling him that uh, my brother, of course, he always was thinking, uh, you know, like, why should we be giving this food away, this garbage away? Let's get our own hogs. Yeah. So then, uh, see, uh, that's how we uh, got started that. In fact, for a while, we were bringing, uh, giving the garbage to a fellow up on Coyote Road, you know, to get rid of our garbage. Yeah. To be, we had a, we had an open truck, like you see, an open steak truck, and in the front of the truck we had six 55-gallon those oil drums. Mm -hmm. So when you went up into to pick up the trash or the garbage, you put the garbage into these oil big oil drums, yeah. and you put your trash behind. Then when you got to the when you got to the dump, with a fork you forked off the papers and the trash, and then the garbage was in the drums. Then you you either fed it fed it to our own hogs or to begin with, and actually all of that part was before I even was with my brother. I just used to work for him and go with him. We I went in with my brother and I worked for him in the summers. 34, 35, and then I went in with him, business with him in January of 37, because I graduated from high school in 36. Mm -hmm. So then I went in business with him in 37. Were you doing anything in the 20s? Any trash? Oh, my brother started, he was still in high school. He, he finished high school in 1929, and he had just a Model T Ford, and he had a couple of barrels in the back, and he used to go to two or three places and to make a few extra bucks, you know? Yeah. So, uh... Okay, so that was 1930. It was the early 30s when you started. Oh, I, st I started in jam. I started actually in business with him in January of 1937. I started. But I worked for him. I, I drove, the, I worked for him like all the summer of 35 and all the summer of 34, mm -hmm. you know, is when I worked for him, you know. Can you tell us more about the types of stuff that people were throwing away? I know you said that there was garbage. Was yeah, there was garbage. And and the what, nor what about all the other stuff? What normally, sure, all the other stuff, yeah. you know, whether it be bottles and paper and cans and uh, flour, you know, from, from, the, from the house, you know, anything that came out of the household. So it's relatively simple, though, compared to what we throw away today, right? Well, there was no shrink wrap in there. No what? Shrink wrap. You didn't see plastic children's. Toys. No, 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 a lot of no, 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 right? no, 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 nothing like that. No, yeah. So bottles and oh, sure, cans bottles, and paper. bottles and papers and cans and you know rags. Yeah, and anything that came out of the house, you know. Did you think if the if the fellow from uh, the chauffeur up there, if he had a can of other things, he'd bring it down separate. But uh, primarily, you just took what came out of the house. No garden stuff, you know. When, so do you think people had less trash back then? Because oh no, so not of these. Packaging? Not of these big these big estates. It would be nothing to go to uh, and uh, and get uh, a thirty two gallon container full of. Uh, a household of uh, uh, gar garbage, because they did entertaining. You know these big estates like the Napa Estate, biggest estate up there, the Peabody's Estate, 
we went to, and uh, Nixon there, and you know, McGann up there, T.C. Walker, you know. And actually, T.C. Walker in the summertime always had a big family. They would have two 32-gallon cans, and you picked up Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday on the, those big places. We had two... We had two estates that you went every day. The McCormick Estate, Stanley McCormick Estate, you went every day, six days a week. And Mrs. Slater up there in East Valley, for some reason or other, she had, she wanted it uh, picked up every day, six days a week. Wow. $15 a month. And that was all food and everything all, else? And they came out of the house. Everything. Everything came out of the house. A lot of flowers. You know, they uh, they decorated, you're not decorated, but they used a lot of flowers in the house. Anything that came out of the house. Yeah. But as I say, there was a, might have been, uh, well, like the Slater Sr. and the General Babbitts, a few pl uh, there was a few places that they got rid of their own papers. They would burn their papers. And then once a year or twice a year, they save. You know, come and pick up the cans and bottles. Mm -hmm. All you picked up was the food scraps mm -hmm. from the kitchen, you know. And there was two places that I used to go up the end of the house, like Oakley Thorns was a big place. You went up the big back porch where they fix the flowers. You got the flower can. You went into the kitchen. You got the garbage can. And uh, you went into the pantry, got their can. But in the interim, of course, they when they fill up, they had their other big containers, but you went up into the house. Mm -hmm. And then another thing we did, a lot of, you lined, you lined their garbage cans. By that I mean you got newspaper, you got a newspaper, you put the newspaper and you line the garbage cans. For the food. For the food. The garbage, you mean food. And if you didn't line the can, you always put a paper on the bottom of the can so that the garbage wouldn't stick to the bottom. Oh, yeah. And then there's some places yeah. periodically, you know, maybe once a week if the can start got smelly, you wash the can for them. You wash the garbage can yeah. for them. Yeah. Okay. So, so this, you're talking about the 30s. The yeah, I'm talking the about the 30s. 30s. I'm then, talking about the 30s right up to the, you know, the, the, the war time, and then that's when everybody, of course, cut back, yeah. you know, in the 30s. But you yeah. used this stake side truck until oh yeah until, until, until about 40s. 1960 I think oh. we have seen that picture of all those trucks back there and then we got the first Packer truck and when was that that, that was in about the early 60s you remember that first Packer truck that we got it was in uh, a Chevrolet it was a 19 uh, it was a 1958 Chevrolet was the first compacted truck that. Uh, that uh, that we got it was used. No, it was brand new. Brand new Chevrolet was too too big a heavy of a box for the size of the truck. That, yeah. that, that's correct, and it. Uh, yeah. But but that was the first compactor truck uh, yeah. that we that we purchased. 1958. And prior to that, it was all over the top. Open stake trucks. Open stake truck. That's why well, today sometimes the I can hardly walk. We used to lift that stuff over the top. Yeah, and there was there was no. Well, let's go back a step. When the county see, there was as many as we had four different haulers, even like in the Montecito area, and some of them went into a whole branch. We didn't go, so it was competitive, you know, four haulers. This was in the 50s or 40s? Four, that was in the 30s. Oh, okay. Until the county and some of the haulers, their trucks was, uh, let's say, you know, I don't want to get into, you know, some of the trucks were dilapidated trucks. Their helpers, if we can commonly use the word, they get a wino, hey, come on, give us a hand. Be a top man. They put them up on top. So they'd hand them up the stuff, you know. And uh, so that everything and uh, was like uh, all competitive, but the county had no control over it. 
fact that a couple of times the, the highway patrol even stopped the trucks and because they were so, you know, the trucks with their brakes and the whole thing that uh, there was this the repair, you know, that, uh, that they were going around. So the county says we're going to put restrictions. If you want to stay in business, you have to get a permit. And yeah, you know, your truck's going to have to be covered. Your men, you know, they're, you're not going to be able just to get anybody to work for you. In other words, have a respectable, yeah. it was a typical, hey, there goes a garbage truck, you know. Yeah. When was that? When did they start? And they, they, I don't know, the county could look it up. I guess they started that in the it was, 60s. The, 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 the county started the permit process that's, yeah, the permit in 1960, per and then that's when this whole concept of zones took place in the Santa Barbara County in the 60s. And that's yeah. when the county was, was so, spoke, so to speak, uh, yeah. chopped up in these various zones. Yeah. And these various zones still exist today with the exception of yeah. Cuyama and, um, and what we call uh, Route 154, the San Marcos Pass. And, all the way to Paradise Road and the Trout Club, and for some reason, we uh, we inherited those. But uh, at any event, that's when all of this zone business started. Yeah. Well, we when we, when they zoned it, we had uh, Montecito, Hope Ranch, Michigan. Pa pa parts of it. Parts of it. Parts of what? Montecito. No, well, we had we. You had didn't a, have all of Montecito. Well, when they when they put down the zone. Oh, they, when they made the zones when prior they made to the, the zones. Well, prior to the zone, well, you everybody picked up where they wanted it, but as long as it was in the district. But then, when they zoned it, that's when they gave half of our business in Goleta. Remember, they went down. They made the zone. When when you went in the city Goleta, we had everything. Above Hollister Avenue till Patterson. Went out there, remember we had there where David that, lived. And that's then, right, and those same. We went down and they went down Patterson, and then they gave this, the other company, which is now still their area, they had the one side of Patterson. As you went down, we had the left, they had the right. Then you went down, down through Hollister Avenue. Which is still today, they have the right hand side of Goleta and we have the left hand side, which we still have today. And that still exists today. Still exists today, all the way out to Elwood. We had the, the Ellen Cano track, we had Isla Vista, and they had the north. And remember, then it came up to where it ended up there, to going up to, uh, up to the canyon where. Winchester Canyon. Winchester Canyon, to the when, power that, lines. when that came up. Discussion came up, well, where's the dividing line? And I remember going out there and said, well, the dividing line are going to be these power lines. And then we had everything above that. Clear out to Ga clear out to Gavio. To Gavio. And that still exists today, doesn't it? Yeah, these zones are, these, these zones are coming up on, uh, on, on 50, yeah. on, on, on 50 years. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. And that was channel disposal back then, right? Yeah, right. well, first it was Borgatello Brothers. It was my brother and I. Okay. And then when we wanted to incorporate, so to have, have a corporation for the, you know, you get under, which made it good for, as you know, with corporation, we incorporated into, uh, into uh, channel. channel disposal company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell us about the, the pig farm, where it was located, how many pigs you had, and oh yeah, well naturally we started out just with the uh, what 40, 50 pigs. The hog farm was in San Antonio Creek Road. You could either get to San Antonio Creek Road from Tucker's Grove down there, or from up in the San Marcos Pass, right past the San Antonio Bridge there. You made a left. Well, the road is still there, and that's a different road. But anyway, you went down there, and our place was right on top of the hill there. We had 10 acres there. And no, no water, 
We drilled our own well, got very little water, but when we went up there, we had a haul of water, and that's where we started our pigs. Because, as I said before, my brother and I, we were giving the garbage away, so he said, well, why not get our own place? So then the pig farm really got to be quite a operation is when the marine base came to town, or came to Goleta, then uh, my brother had gone in the service and I was still taking care of the small pig farm and the business, and we got the contract to get the food scraps, to get the garbage from the marine base, which is right there where UCSB is. When was, what year was that? Uh, well, that was, uh, let's see, 1940, let's see, 41, the war broke, 1942. Mm -hmm. See, the war broke out in December of 41, and then things really started to break open, you know, and they started that, build that marine base. They started right down there where the airport is now, and then the, they started, they built that the base up there were the personnel, and of course, what it was was a it was a marine air station. That was uh, where they they're training the fighter pilots, and that were going overseas. Yeah. So you were collecting food scraps, just and food scraps, yeah, and the that built up to about we we were running about five hundred head of pigs, wow. up to the peak. Oh, San Antonio. And we were shipping a load of hogs a month. And of course, we had somebody was shipping them to Los Angeles. How many is in a load? Well, the government wanted the pigs or heavy, so we would keep them to about 300, 350 pounds, and uh, oh, depending, you know, maybe be 30, 25, 30. Every month. Every month. Wow. Every month. So yeah. how many truck loads? How many trips did you take? from your routes up to the hog farm every day? Well, I used to go to the Marine base every day, twice a day. Go about seven in the morning and go to pick up you know, the, the garbage and then go up late in the afternoon after the evening meal. Mm -hmm. So my day started, say, about seven o'clock till seven or eight until I got finished. Cause I